So in this video, we're gonna take this picture and turn it into this. Let's get started. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. I'm Gene Sizemore. It's been a minute since I've posted a video, but I've been working on a really cool secret project. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. In today's video, I wanna show you how I do interior car photographs. Now, one of the problems with photographing the interior of a car is getting enough light into all the cracks and crevices and really showing the full dynamic range within the interior of the car. So to do this, you'll need editing software such as Lightroom Classic, and I'll also be using Photoshop. If you'd like more information on how to get Lightroom and Photoshop for less than two cups of Starbucks coffee, I'll put a card up here with a video I did on that subject. Moving on. So for this secret project I've been working on, we rented a Camaro SS, a boss of a car, a lot of fun to drive. So before I returned the car, I took the opportunity to take some photographs of the interior and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you my process for putting these photos together. You can see here, I've taken just a regular standard photograph of the interior of this car and I'm really just in the parking lot at the airport in DC. So not a great location, but I did this because I wanted to show you that you can really do this anywhere, even your own driveway. You don't need a big studio or some fancy location, so no excuses. The secret sauce behind these images is that you're going to take five to seven images and you're going to paint them together in Photoshop. Now, I call this light painted interiors. However, recently on Facebook, one of the groups I belong to, we had an interesting discussion about what light painting is and is not. I've come to understand that there are different opinions about what light painting is. So there is light painting where you are doing a long exposure and you're creating these really cool light sculptures for example, orbs. If you wanna learn how to do that, I found somebody down under who has a great YouTube channel called The School of Light, and I highly recommend following his channel. He does really great work, and I can't wait to try some of the cool things that he teaches. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. So another form of light painting is when you take a long exposure of a car or any subject and you paint the light out of frame, but you put light on it in several different locations. Now the form of light painting that I'm gonna be doing involves taking several different exposures, illuminating different parts of the car, and then bringing those together in Photoshop and painting them together using the paintbrush tool and some masking, which I'll show you, in Photoshop. I actually learned this method from one of my YouTube mentors, of which I have many, uh, named Mo. He's an amazing photographer in Bahrain with a really awesome channel where he shares a lot of information. I'll link to his channel in the description as well. First, taking the images. Okay, so this is kind of a last minute thing here. I haven't really planned this out, but I am returning a rental car, which is a convertible Camaro that we used for a music video last night. And I had a few extra minutes, so I thought, hmm, I'm in a parking garage, it's a little dark. Let me see if I can do an interior shot. So I figured I would take a couple of uh, pictures and I'll show you guys how I put all that together in post. So the idea behind these interior photos that I do is you can see with just natural light, um, it's way too dark inside the car and you don't get like the accent lights and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you how I put this together so I get a nice well-lit photograph of the interior of the car. First thing I'm going to do is I use a tripod and because I'm going to do multiple images so I don't want the camera to move at all, I'm going to use a wide angle. I'm using a 24 millimeter on my Nikon Z6 right now and then I'm going to use a handheld light and it can be anything. I've done this with Home Depot lights. You can use a light to take several different pictures as you're lighting different parts of the car, and then we'll put that together when we're done. Okay, so we're back in the studio now and we're gonna jump into Lightroom. So in Lightroom, I've arranged the images, I've gone through, I've culled through them, figured out which ones that I want to include in the final image. And now if you uh, highlight all of these images, clicking on the first one, holding down shift, click on the last one, right click on any of those highlighted images and 
uh, go to edit in Photoshop. And when you do that, they will open up in Photoshop as layers. Okay, so we need to talk about layers. If you're new to Photoshop, one of the most important and most basic things you have to understand is how to work with layers. Once you understand layers, everything else is pretty much common sense after that. Um, you can do just about anything when you understand how the layers interact with each other. So I'm going to uh, use these index cards here to demonstrate how layers work. So let's say that this is uh, your this is your base layer. So this is all the way on the bottom. You're looking down at this layer, okay? And then let's say you're gonna color that layer blue, which I'm gonna use the sticky note to do. Okay, so now your base layer is now blue. Now let's say that you want to non-destructively remove part of that blue. As you would create a new layer on top of this, that's gonna be this one. And then you're gonna create what we would call a mask in Photoshop and just cut this however you wanna mask it. Okay, just like that. And then when you turn that layer on, you are now looking through the top layer, which is your mask, and it reveals only what you wanna see on the bottom layer. Now that's a, a very simple example, but these layers can then be blended a certain way, how translucent uh, they are so you can actually see through the layers. There's really endless possibilities in Photoshop once you understand the basics of layers, okay? Back in Photoshop, you'll see on the right-hand side that we have all of the layers that I just imported from Lightroom. I've identified the uh, base layer. So um, each of these layers represents a portion of the image that I'm going to include um, once I uh, start painting all this together. Where I click here in the bottom right, it'll turn the layer on and off. And you'll see when I turn it on, you can see my arm show up. And each of these represent just a different part of the vehicle that is lit up. And some of them I'm in the shot, some of them I'm not. So just like in my index card example, I've now taken a second card and I'm laying it down on top and I'm gonna start manipulating the image. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this layer and I'm gonna collect, I'm going to create a layer mask. Now the layer mask is gonna start out as white. So in the index card example, anything that is is white, pretend like this is a black index card, I should have colored this black, but anything that is white is gonna show up and anything that is black, such as if this, just pretend like this was a black index card, anything that is black is going to block anything from the bottom layer coming through. So in this particular case, as you can see, I've turned on this layer and I have a white mask, which means that it's doing nothing right now. What I can do is I can invert this mask and you do that on a Mac by hitting Command or Control on a PC and, and then I. And when you do that, you can see my hand disappeared. It is now a black mask, which means it is completely blocking out anything from that layer showing up. So what it's doing now is it's blocking everything from that layer from showing up on the layer below it. Now, before this real quick, let me disable this mask. I just right clicked on it and disabled it. What I want to do is I want to see what this is lighting up. So we can see that uh, from this picture, I'm getting some more light around the side of the seats and this little center console, some of the stitching here. It's bringing that detail and the texture in from the leather, okay? So uh, that's gonna be what I'm going to use this layer to apply to the base layer. So I'm gonna bring this back in, re-enable this mask. Now I'm gonna come over and pick up my brush tool and I am going to make sure that this color, the foreground color, is white. Now, if these are different colors in Photoshop, you can click on this button that returns them back to default. And if you hit the X key, you can toggle back and forth between black or white, which makes it really easy when you're working with masks because you can quickly mask in or mask out things depending on what color you're using. Right now, we're gonna stay on white because I wanna let things shine through. And I'm gonna lower my flow just a little bit not too much, but I'm gonna take it down to about 70%, just because I don't want it to go too crazy. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm on a nice soft brush. And then I'm going to use my bracket keys to bring the size of that brush up. And then I am simply going to brush along the side of the seat. And you can see how that is starting to bring in the detail. 
And I'm doing this just by remembering what that particular layer had illuminated. Let's see what happens if we go to full strength here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and keep it at full strength. So that's the first layer. The next layer we're going to turn on. And as you can see, the next layer, what does it bring in? It doesn't really do much. I don't know why these are even here. I'm gonna take these out. They might have gotten put in there by accident. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this on and you see this is a steering wheel and the door, okay? So again, I go in, make a layer mask, I'm gonna invert it, Command I. I'm on 100% flow, paintbrush, white color, and I'm going to just paint in the details in the door and get some of that steering wheel in there. But some of the dashboard came in. Now you can see over here, I got a little bit too much. Um, I think that's my shirt. So if I hit the X key to change the color to black, I can just undo that. It's just that simple. Go back to white, go to the next layer. Next layer looks like we've got a little bit of the gear shifter side panel here lit up and the dashboard. So again, layer mask, invert. We're gonna go on the front side of the dashboard. Now, if you go over an area that you've painted in before, that you've got light from, from a previous layer, you can see how if, if it's not lit in that layer, it's gonna go dark again. So again, you hit the X key and you just bring that detail back, just like that. And it's really just a matter of kind of finding that balance. All right. Uh, let's see, this one, we've got a lot of details in the buttons here, uh, a little bit, yeah, it's mainly just the dashboard it looks like, okay? So I'm gonna go here. So in this shot, it's still kind of dark down in here, which I would rather um, have more detail down here and over here on this side. Uh, but, you know, it's, um, it's still, if we turn all these layers off, you can kind of see the progression. So this was the base image that we started with and we brought in a little bit of the seats. We brought in the steering wheel and the door. We brought in the dashboard. We brought in the, um, we brought in the console, we brought in that side of the door, the back side of the door, brought in more detail on the speedometer. And so this is pretty much where uh, we're going to keep this image at this point, okay? So the next step in this uh, process is I am going to create a curves adjustment layer just above all of these layers. And I'm just going to bring up the light just to tie all this together. Just make a slight S curve back down. It wasn't really an S curve, I guess it was more like a C curve. Okay, so that kind of uh, brightens up a little bit of the, of the image. What I'm gonna do now that I have these layers selected, I'm gonna go up to uh, layer and I'm going to uh, merge layers and that's gonna merge the layers that I have joined together. And it's just gonna create one common layer that I can now use to cut out this background. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask and then I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. I'm gonna cut this window out first. Now I like to use the pen tool. And again, I, I think that, you know, if you're doing this professionally, you're gonna to wanna to spend a little bit more time um, working on this. You can see, for example, I've got these light leaks coming out here. I'll have to see kind of how that plays once I get the, the image done. Um, and with the pen tool, uh, there's a bunch of stuff about the pen tool that you should learn, uh, but I'm not gonna get into it here in this video. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. Once you've got all this selected with the pen tool, you're gonna to hit Control, click.
click or right click and make selection. I like to keep my feather radius around two. That seems to work for what I do. And now that we've got the selection made, I'm gonna go back and pick the brush and I'm going to select the black color as my foreground because I'm gonna be blocking out this uh, area. Then I'm gonna go up here to select and inverse the selection. So now I'm working just inside this selection. And from there, what is happening here? Oh, <laughs> okay. The group was on underneath it. Okay. There we go. And let me uh, inverse this back. Clean this up. All right. So now we have the window cut out. And now I'm going to come back over here, hit Control D to unselect, go back to my pen tool, and I'll speed this up as well. Now you can see what I'm doing here is I'm getting rid of the background so that you can see through this layer. Whereas before we were working with layers that were on top, we are now going to take a layer and put it underneath. And I will show you that layer now. I brought the, oh, let me deselect, hit uh, Command D to this deselect everything. Now, this is a little tricky. One of the mistakes that I made and something you should do different when you um, are doing this is I think my camera was a little bit too angled into the car. It's it's better when you're looking more across the car because it's just more of a realistic view. And um, to be honest with you, I'm almost wondering if, yeah, you see how, you see how I got the hood in there? So let me, um, let me enable this and then go back here because I, I made a mistake and I, I got the hood um, blocked out and don't really want that. So I'm gonna bring that hood back and that's gonna be something we're gonna have to deal with later because it's definitely not the right color because it's reflecting the light from the parking garage. So we'll have to deal with that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is turn this layer back on and I, I picked this uh, just because I like the light streaks in the trees in the background, but the angle, you know, you'll notice is the camera was a little bit low to the ground and you want to find an, an image that's, you know, similar to how high you were when you were taking a picture of the car. So uh, that's an important thing to remember, something that I didn't with this particular image. So uh, I'm going to hit control T and just kind of make this a little larger and you'll see uh, here in a minute that as I've got this thing pulled up, I am now going to uh, drop this thing underneath the layer that we were working on. And as soon as I do that, you'll see the magic happen. Okay, now you can see that the image is um, behind. I'm going to uh, just kind of move this image around until I get a composition that I like. I've got the bridge in the background. I've got the, the lights. Um, a lot of this we're going to kind of abstract. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. So let me bring this back up. Okay, so once we have it kind of like this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, highlight this and we're going to blur this background. Because remember, you know, if, if you're taking this picture and you want it to be and you were taking it for real, uh, the background would be a little bit blurry. So we're just going to put a little Gaussian blur on the background here. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. All right. Now, um, to soften this up a little bit, I am going to reselect the mask where I've blocked out the background of the car. And we're going to go to Select and Mask. Then I want to add just a little bit more feathering to the edge. I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit. 
And what I'm trying to do is just sell this so that it's not such a rough cutout, so it doesn't look you know, so much like it's been Photoshopped. So that might be a little subtle, but the, it softened up the lines a little bit. Then above this layer, I'm going to create a photo filter. And because we're, uh, even though we're at night and there should be like blue tones in the sky, we've got a lot of street lights. And so I'm gonna leave this as a, as a warming filter. I like to use this here, the warming filter 81. And we're just gonna bring this intensity up. Uh, actually, let me bring it all the way up so you can kind of see what it's doing. What, it's, what you can see happening here is that it's putting some of the tint from, well, we're trying to make it look like there's some tint from the background on the car interior itself. So let's back this down so it's a little more realistic. And this just kind of helps sell the effect a little bit. And there we go. Um, and I'll turn this off and on so you can see it. So this is without it. You see it's really kind of cold and silvery. And when you turn it on, it just kind of warms up the image a little bit. Okay, then the next thing that we're going to do is on this, um, on this actual uh, photo that we created, I'm going to go to Filter and Render and Lens Flare. And this is just something that I like to do just to kind of sell this effect a little bit. It helps tie the image together. I usually take this uh, cross here, this actual flare itself, and I try to put it somewhere coming off the hood so that it shines down over the dashboard and you'll see when you're on 50 millimeter to 300 millimeter, you get these little flares off here as well. And when you click OK, you're going to end up getting that kind of flare, which just really ties this image all together and helps sell it. OK, so that was just a real quick example of how I put all these images together to create what I call a light painted interior shot. Um, this one was done really quickly. Obviously, you should spend more time on your masking and more time selecting a background photo, maybe even taking your own background photos. But I just wanted to give you kind of an example of how I do it. And uh, I have a lot of fun doing these because I really love photographing cars and there's not a lot of people doing the interiors like this. And so these are kind of unique images and something that you can try. If you do try this, please let me know post them on Instagram, tag me in them so that I can check them out or send them to me and I'll feature them on my Instagram feed. As always, thank you for joining me. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Don't forget to discover, create, and share, and I will see you in the next video.